Our gay and lesbian clients are actually some of our best clients and we really appreciate them. They have the same needs and wants as straight couples. I have definitely done same-sex wedding cakes before and quite frankly, I it, the experience didn't really differ in, in any way. I mean, to me personally, love is love and uh, cake is cake. I have never photographed a gay wedding and I would love to photograph uh, uh, a wedding with two grooms or two brides. I don't know. I don't know what it would be like to shoot a, a gay wedding, but uh, I look forward to it. And um, I would imagine they'd be very, very stylish. How did you find the people who are in this book? And uh, incidentally, um, how did you get Rosie O'Donnell to write the introduction? Well, for Rosie O'Donnell, that was actually the publisher's idea, if I'm remembering correctly. The rest of the people who are in the book, most of them came from meeting them on the line. I felt it was really important to record people's stories at the moment that things were happening. What is the known history of same-sex marriage or like ceremonies? In modern times, the first country to authorize uh, same-sex weddings was um, at the Netherlands in 2001, followed quickly uh, throughout the rest of the decade by the two countries of the Iberian Peninsula, Belgium, Sweden and Norway, Canada, Mexico. As far as civil unions are concerned, virtually the rest of um, non-Eastern Europe, Slovenia, certain sections of Argentina, Venezuela and Colombia, South Africa was one of the earliest ones to authorize uh, gay marriages. Connecticut and Massachusetts and Vermont and New Hampshire, Iowa, the District of, of uh, Columbia now authorizes uh, gay marriages. In my experience performing weddings and hearing stories about people's weddings, what I see are a lot of similarities. Everybody has some concerns, so when I sit down to plan a ceremony with somebody, I get to hear all of that. I've heard them talk about the joy of experiencing something they never thought they would experience because of the legal situation around gay marriage. First, I need to know what the issues are. So when I sit down with a couple and we're planning a wedding together, we have a long conversation. I ask them to tell me the story of their relationship so I can hear the language that they use and I can adopt some of that language in my ceremony. What's the current level of same-sex marriage acceptance in different denominations of Judaism and Christianity in the United States? My own church, the Episcopal Church, uh, has now authorized uh, um, bishops to use their own discretion. I'm sure that in those states where same-sex marriages are legal, there's at least one priest who's, uh, who's done it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be much different from the vows the straight couples pledge to each other. It's an extraordinarily transformational ceremony to be a part of as an officiant um, because we have the opportunity to contextualize what is happening for people in the wedding party and for the couple who's getting married. Language creates covenant, language creates relationship, and language creates commitment. It's wonderful to see how that changes people's hearts and minds. Do you think wedding planners are going to, in the future, uh, find a more accepting atmosphere for gay marriages? So I, I think that this is just a matter of time, not just the polls and not just because of talking to young people, but on a spiritual level, I believe that love always wins. Legal marriage is, is particularly important for this, the legal stability of the family, not only to guarantee the rights, but also to guarantee the responsibilities. So a part of every ceremony I've ever done is for the, the wedding party, the people who are gathered there, to commit to the couple. In terms of wedding planning, I'm sure that you get this more than I do, but there's an element of counseling that's involved. I just can't get my head around this. I just can't quite be here for this. Or you may see it on the person's face. To help acknowledge the effort that it takes to show up to a, a gay child's ceremony. We thanked people for traveling wide distances physically and emotionally in order to get there because it was so important to us that they had. What books do you think are most helpful in the wedding planner being able to understand what is involved in one of these uh, types of weddings? And I think those are my favorite stories not only because I'm a sucker for a good love story and a good triumph against difficulty story but also because those are the ones that I think are the common ground with all couples getting married. So you gotta change the gender pronouns sometimes but I, I've enjoyed and I've 
I've recommended to all the couples, uh, heterosexual and gay and lesbian couples that I've worked with, um, to look at the anthology Into the Garden. It also in the back has ceremony scripts of various traditions. What are the options for couples who want to keep that sacred element but won't necessarily be welcome to do so in their own church? We're happy to have them to come to the Episcopal Church. As a wedding planner, they may contact you and ask that you put together a celebration of their marriage. And Cheryl, the advice I give to wedding planners is in this sort of situation, you have a heavy responsibility. The vendors are going to be dealing with a situation that they normally have not run across before. Make sure that the location where this wedding is going to take place, if it's not a gay-friendly church and it's going to be someplace else in a secular setting, when I talk with uh, these planners as professionals, they need to transcend any of the uh, issues they, they may have. If they're going to be successful, they might find that uh, they have grown uh, in the whole process as well. Now, in, in fact, Cheryl, you and I know they will have more fun. <laughs> Everyone involved will have more fun. <laughs>